Hey YouTube, it's Robert Hall, and in today's video, we're gonna talk about working with composite photographer, Dustin Valkama. Today's video is sponsored by Adorama, which buys me the time to create these type of videos without the influence of any specific camera brand. I personally shop at Adorama for their great deals on a wide variety of products, as well as their support of those products down the road. So if you end up enjoying this video, please give it a like, and if you're interested in any of the products, use the links in the description below. Dustin's work first caught my attention a few years ago, back when he was featured all over the internet for some portraits of his son as a Jedi wielding a lightsaber. They were really well done composites. And it was funny because when I first saw them, I thought, wow, he's a, he's a great photographer. And then I finally got to talking to him and realized what an accomplished digital artist he is. And it's a unique situation to me because photography for Dustin isn't necessarily his primary skill. It's more so a means of acquiring the assets he needs in order to complete his work as a digital artist. Now I've worked with Dustin on projects of various scale from sending him some editing work that I simply was not capable of doing to assigning him to full blown composite works, which I'll probably show you guys some more of those projects down the road as we just completed them. But what I really wanted to see was how Dustin works on one of his projects from start to finish. So I went over to his side of the state and I joined him on one of his cosplay shoots. I love cosplay photography. <laughs> uh, for me, it's cosplayers have their own level of creativity. Like the stuff that they do is insane. So it inspires me. And so working with them and being able to give them the quality of work that they put into their own costumes is an amazing feeling. Like it's something that I, I truly love. In this instance, he was photographing Jackie, who is a local radio host who cosplays on the side as multiple characters, and in this instance, as Captain Marvel. And I thought it'd be a fitting shoot to join him on because the Captain Marvel movie has obviously just been released. One of the interesting things I found about working with Dustin is just how he can work pretty much anywhere. The initial acquisition of his images is in his garage, in like a homemade studio in his garage. So it's a very humble start to a really polished final result. Being limited with your gear or with your, your setup and, and your environment and your scene, for me actually, it's kind of a plus. It's one of those things that I enjoy having limitations at times because being say in a garage like we were for this photo shoot, there's certain things that I know that I can't do. I know that the ambient light is going to be at a certain level because of the way that my garage lights are set up and so I just turn them off and I'm okay with having a little bit more of a dramatic feel with not so much ambient. I'm a resourceful artist in the sense that less can always mean more. If I need to amplify something, I can do that in post-production. I don't typically like to consider myself like limited. It's, it's kind of like an adapt and overcome situation when you don't have something and you know, today we were using a step ladder instead of a pulley system from, you know, from the ceiling. Um, that would have been sweet if you have one of those in your garage. Right, you know, which would be awesome. You know, there's times where I, I've thought, you know, on shoots like, oh, I wish I had a, a twin or a full mattress I could just have somebody fly and dive onto, you know, and you don't have that. As the artist, it's again, it's kind of my job to make sure that, that I'm using what I have to the best of my ability. Everything else I can push and post. Now Dustin typically uses the 8600, that's his primary light, but he's been interested in a few of the different Godox products, so I actually brought a lot of the equipment that I'm using regularly over to him just so that he could kind of test it out and see how it fit within his workflow. So he used two of my lights, two 8600 Pros, and for modifiers he had a deep parabolic soft box and then a strip box on his rear light. And his method of gelling? shows that you don't really have to be super specific about gelling light at the source like I always do. He would just stick a gel sheet in front of his bulb and not really fuss about if it was positioned or covering the light completely. And Dustin will admittedly say that he's not hyper technical about the photography aspect. He's just focused on getting exactly what he needs from a visual perspective that he knows is going to slot in perfectly to his final result. For instance, he would gel his lights so that he had these colored light sources that he knew would add to the final visual properties of the image. And for me, as an on-location photographer, I'm always working to adapt 
to the ambient situation around me. Whereas Dustin already has his final ambient environment in mind and he has to adapt his light to fit that narrative. When I'm shooting, it's more the feel that I get from the photos while I'm taking them on set. It isn't always planned out because I know that the environment can be added later. The shot is really more just the dynamic nature of the lighting. You know, sometimes I turn things a little bit crazier to give me a different feel and this and that, that I may know requires more work on the post-production side of it. And so the shots for me are specifically like just the mood and the feel that I have that I try my best to relate to the viewer. Dustin used a mood board on his laptop that he just stuck in the garage and he used that to refer to poses that were both authentic to the character that Jackie was portraying as well as would work in the final results that he had planned. It was also awesome to watch him work with Jackie and really coach her through the emotions that he needed in order to get the final result that he was looking for. Like he would have her like crouch down and scream into the camera lens just so that he captured that raw emotion and it would be really authentic when he moved it into one of his composites. Every model is different. So you have 101 different personalities. Everybody has a different style that they like. Um, so it, as a photographer, in that aspect, it's my job to kind of pull that inspiration that I have for the shoot and kind of pass that along to them. For this specific photo shoot, like I had her scream and had her get down and there, there's certain characteristics that you get when you're screaming naturally versus just, ah, you know, opening it and pose, you know, it's kind of like a cheese smile versus a laugh smile. And so it's really, as a photographer, it's, it's my job to make sure that my energy is up to par with where I want that shoot to be. And in this one specifically, it worked out well because if I was a little bit more relaxed, then she was more relaxed. If I needed her to amp up, then I kind of amp my energy up along with her. That, that's kind of where like the energy comes from is just, I feel like as a photographer, as the artist, like it's my job to portray that to her. It's a completely different style of photography for me to understand because I am always building in the process and for the most part, my work is 99% done after I hit the button. Yeah, there's editing, but all the layers of thinking already happened. Dustin's work just got started after he completed it because now he has to get into the post work. And after he captured it, in order for it to come to life, he has to bring the subject out of the scene that he captured and then he has to create a new scene behind him and then make it cohesive by bringing in new layers from other asset packs or even images that he captures. There's a, there's a fine line between being perfect and being finished. And so for me, I typically work on my images until I get the same feeling that I planned on having when I was taking the shot. So sometimes it's an hour, sometimes it's 30 minutes. Other times it may take two weeks because I just need that time to shoot other assets or gather assets or you know, whatever it may be, the perfect shot is the finished shot. It's, it's not always going to be 100% technically perfect, but as an artist, that's kind of what we live for is not having utter perfection. Now I have to say, I'm extremely fascinated about this type of workflow because for the last decade, photography has always been for me about what's in front of me. It's about how I can manipulate existing environments to get a desired result. But now that I'm in a new studio and I'm working on more commercial and editorial projects, I'm really trying to open up my mind to not look at photography as just capturing what's in front of me, but instead bringing in other mediums and really utilizing technology and software to create possibilities that otherwise weren't available to me. If you're just starting off, I would say that shooting often and taking the time to learn 
the post-production craft. You know, first getting a good base, you know, right? just, just learning how to work with people, which is 100%, I feel, coming from experience. So you can learn how to shoot, you can learn how to pose, but the post-production side is one that you need plenty of hours in to understand what you need to do on set to be able to fake certain things in post-production. I guess the, the general word is, you know, you put 10,000 hours in and that's like the sweet spot to mastery. And I've kind of personally just taken that sort of backwards and I've allowed myself to fail for 10,000 hours. And in that failure is like so much growth. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this behind the scenes look at Dustin Velkema's Captain Marvel cosplay shoot. Now, all the time, you guys are leaving comments about getting more in depth with the post side of what I do. And to be completely honest, it's really not what I'm passionate making videos about. But Dustin, he's a much more accomplished and much more capable digital artist who enjoys sharing his experience in post-production. So I really encourage you guys to check out his YouTube channel, which is linked in the description below. In addition to that, Dustin and I are going to be sharing a lot more projects that we're working on together. So I'm really excited for you guys to see those in the future. All right, guys, subscribe if you'd like to see my future videos. Leave a like if you enjoyed this one. Comment if you have any questions. And until next time, keep on shooting.